The GTX 1080, a card released on May 27th, 2016 for 599 USD, can be had on the secondhand market for still what I would consider reasonable prices versus newer cards. Why is this? Well, it has to do with the fact that it isn't that desirable for, you guessed it, crypto miners. Providing similar hash rates to a 1660 Super, but using more power, it makes for a good option for gamers in 2021. So here is my story of making a PC from the recent GTX 1080 that I picked up in a used PC parts hunt for 400 Aussie dollars, which is about 295 USD. Where this is the main star of the show, well actually there's two main stars of the show. This first off being here, a pickup that we got for 110 Aussie dollars. 16 gigabytes of RAM, i7, 4th gen. Dirty GTX 650, crap power supply, but we're really only interested in the CPU, the motherboard, and the RAM. Then we're moving on to the GTX 1080. This right here is a very powerful card because it is the OC water-cooled version. And we picked this up for 400 Aussie dollars, making it a pretty decent buy in the current land of graphics cards. Then we've got a 120 gigabyte SSD, two terabyte backup drive for games and everything else. Then a $20 VS600 power supply that we picked up off the used market. Then the last component is the RGB case because we've got four fans, we've got the bling. So let's start testing out this graphics card and also this build to see if everything works before we put this PC together. Are you tired of seeing this annoying activate Windows message? Then if so, today's video sponsor SCD Keys has you covered. For as little as $14 using the coupon code BFTYC, you can get activated today. Works for Windows 11 Pro too. Links in the description below. So we quickly tested out the power supply and then we dusted off the GPU and the motherboard and the components and we have a working signal here with the i7-4770. Now one thing is, is the BIOS is a really early revision so I might update that just for better stability. Usually you generally don't update your BIOS if everything's working fine but in this case I just want to do it just to make sure that the GTX 1080 in uh, Windows 10 and if someone upgrades to Windows 11 for example they come into no problems so that is really good news everything works fine except I also might replace this fan here because it is like it doesn't look like it's working properly it starts to spin up and then it just freezes so I'm going to replace that fan with a cheap option that will still sort of add to the aesthetics of this build We don't have a uh, memory control in the BIOS, so I can't overclock or tune the uh, DDR3 memory, but fortunately it has made the DDR3 memory that it's at 1600 megahertz on both sticks, and we are picking up the 
uh, two channels there. So we do have at least a baseline here for good performance. Well, hopefully, which we will test that out in games. The most important thing, of course, is at 1080p, maxing out this Gravis card at um, 100% while we are playing some of these games. So let's boot those games up, check out the temperatures and check out the performance. So finishing up on the benchmarks here with Apex Legends, we can see here pretty much 1080p max settings. We're getting around 120 average FPS. The 1% and 0.1% lows were extremely smooth. And I was really surprised because we had a 4770S and memory that was untuned and we really couldn't tune it up in the BIOS. And this thing was absolutely fine with that GTX 1080. Now this was the star of the show, the 1080 is a really good card. I'm actually playing on it. I haven't played on this card in a long time and playing on it really just showed that you don't need a whole lot more than a 1080. And in fact, a lot of these GPUs, even like the RTX 3060, for example, and I might do a dedicated video on the 3060 versus 1080, but when we look at the 3060, that's going in Australia for $800 plus. And if we look at something like this, I picked it up for $400. It's representing extremely good value for money. Now, keep in mind, I did have to clean it up a little bit, but in terms of the temperatures, we were under 60 degrees at all times. And the CPU, that new cooler, we did pull that from another build that I did in the past and I had a spare cooler left over. And the newer Intel all black cooler does a really good job of uh, remaining quiet and in decent temperatures on the 4770S. Now, I was kind of worried that the CPU being a 4770S wouldn't have uh, as much grunt as the 4770, especially the GTX 1080, but we saw with that balance between the CPU and the GPU in Apex Legends monitoring with MSI Afterburner that it was completely fine. And then to top all that off, not only were the temperatures really good on both CPU and GPU, the noise on this build is really well controlled. Now, this is thanks to this budget case here, which is actually not too budget in essence. It's actually really good for the money. I'd say this is the best case that I've picked up in terms of brand new value for money. And it actually comes from a friend uh, who runs a, a business called Sysnex on the Gold Coast here. But I'm still in this environment where cryptocurrencies are commanding the prices of GPUs. And you're just seeing this across all the tech industry where there's no doubting it that the GPU prices are just inflated because of crypto miners when all this other stuff like cases, SSDs, RAM, motherboard CPUs are still coming in at really good prices. So if you wanna build something and you wanna build something for decent value for money, I would definitely put a GTX 1080 up on the top of your list in terms of cards to get where also the power consumption, especially for the performance you're getting, is really well controlled. Now that Fire Strike Extreme score, that is in the 11,000 range, which isn't that far behind some of the newer RTX 3000 cards, in particular the RTX 3060. So this card is looking like it can still do very solid 1080p gaming in 2021. Though keep in mind, one thing to look out for is a lot of people go for the 1080 Ti. And so you might think, oh, well, I get the 1080 Ti, it's got more performance. But I found the 1080 Ti is the minimum and the absolute minimum I could get one for was 600 Aussie dollars versus 400. So that's a 50% increase in the cost, but you're not gonna be getting 50% more performance out of a 1080 Ti over a 1080. So I really think cards like the 1070 and 1080 uh, really hit home in terms of price performance on the used market, even though their prices aren't that great. I still think if you can pick up one of these cards for around 450 Aussie dollars, or if you're in the US, say uh, 300 to 350 US for a 1080, you are gonna be smooth sailing when it comes to PC gaming. And the good thing about the 1080 is, it's not that desirable. And I say this again, when we look at the cards that are good for gamers, it's the ones that aren't too desirable 
for the miners that will end up being the better buyers for the gamers. So the miners probably thinking, and I know this is sad, right? This is how it is in 2021 at this current point in time. The miners are probably thinking, well, I'm not gonna pay extra for the 1080 and get the same revenue every day. So that is at least one fortunate thing going for the GTX 1080. Anyhow, guys, this PC right here, it ended up coming out really well. And this is what I talk about. Recently, you guys probably know that I've had a few fails here on the channel, but this one is one of those ones that's just a big victory. And actually, I've got another couple of victories coming up where you just absolutely win for that price point. So that's what it's all about, the ups and downs of the used market, especially if you are buying stuff that is untested. Never forget that. The untested comes with the risk, but the rewards, in my opinion, are really worth it. And as much as I hate getting faulty parts in that you just can't get working again, sometimes you get those untested builds that just have everything working. And this was one of those examples. And I gotta say, for the price performance, this thing is definitely coming in with the hard hitting value. So if you enjoyed this one, be sure to hit that like button. Also let us know in the comment section below, what do you think about this build? What do you think about the 1080? What do you think about the i7 4770S? I think the S CPUs, especially when it comes to gaming, you're really getting better value than the Ks and the non Ss, the normal versions, because a lot of people don't look for the Ss, but I really like what they bring to the table. Though with that aside, I do apologize for not making as much content as I would. And actually this is gonna tie in perfectly with the question of the day here, which comes from Commando Kodiak, and they ask, how's the new something treating you? And this one is one that hits hard for, I guess, any Aussie right now, because you guys may have seen all over the world that there's this particular, I mean, focus on what's going down in Australia. And from my opinion, it's just one of those things where, and this is a sad thing, right, about my channel is I can't, like, this is where, this is how crazy it's getting. I can't give an opinion because I risk losing my job. And this is where I raise the question to YouTube. It's like, YouTube, guys, please let people freely speak about topics and let them express their opinions and views. And if people uh, think that's wrong, they're not gonna follow that person. If they think that person's right and they agree with them, they're gonna follow them. And I just think the amount of like censorship going on in 2021 is just really to a new low. It's setting the bar really low in terms of what people can and cannot talk about. And in my opinion, I've, I've been, I'm pro-choice. That's what we, like most of the Aussies I talk to, well actually every Aussie I talk to on this topic is pro-choice. And so I just feel people should be able to choose what they need to do. And then people will counter argue that and say, well, you know, you're this, you're that, and they'll call you names. And if they don't get censored, there's no censorship for them. It's just censorship for the people who defend themselves and then point to statistics and data. And, <laughs> and so uh, that's all I can say is, uh, look at some of the people front running some of this stuff. And all I can say is that I, I, um, I just, I feel sad. That's just my opinion on it. And anyway, guys, I hope if you disagree with me, then so be it, but that's what makes the world once what used to make the board what it was now this this is what it is it's just hey how you doing i can't do anything anyway guys that's kind of a crap ending for an otherwise amazing project but that's just how it is and one thing is like i just really it it is eating me up know if youtube if people are watching out there that work for youtube know that this is probably eating up a lot of creators not just me this is eating up a lot of creators and eating up their energy, eating up their motivation. Not only that, it's probably eating up a lot of viewers and their energy too, because we all have, at the end of the day, I feel like we all, should all be entitled to an opinion at the very least. So that one. Anyway, guys, hope that hits home with you. Thanks for staying this far. If you stayed this far and you're enjoying our Tech Yes content, then be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and you'll get the videos as soon as they drop. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.